everybody. How's it going? Welcome to the show. Hope you guys have saved some room in that gas tank because it's time to go one more round with Rob. Here today, I'm going to be breaking, breaking down the top-ranked boxing card from this past Saturday afternoon, headlined by Jamal Semperfy Herring versus Carl Frampton for the WBO Junior Lightweight Championship. Guys, this this card, I, I don't know what's been going on with, with uh, Top Rank's boxing cards that they've been uh, promoting, um, but there have been a couple of cards now that they've just been, there, there have been fights that they uh, have put down that are going to be on that aren't on. There are some fights that they didn't have on the card when I looked it up that ended up being on the card. It's really weird. I might take a, a, a I might take a little bit of time off from doing top rank cards just until whether I figure out where I can find their actual complete cards, or whether they, <clears throat> excuse me, whether they uh, just start posting their full cards. It was really weird. Um, I only have two fights for you guys because on the original card that I saw there was only supposed to be um, three fights. There ended up being a, I, I think it was four or five fights. I think it was four fights. Um, <clears throat> So some of those other fights I wasn't prepared to break down for you guys. So I have two fights for you guys. So a little bit, a little bit of a maybe a quicker show today, uh, but it should still be <clears throat> interesting nonetheless. So we're going to start off with the co-main event. This was going to be for the vacant WBO International Super Flyweight Championship. So we had, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry guys, we had Donnie uh, Knights versus Pablo Carrillo. Uh, so I honestly guys I had not heard of either of these guys like I, like I've said before I'm just getting back into boxing so it's gonna take me a little bit of time to get back on the page with with uh, some of these guys and especially with, with the divisions because there's a ton of divisions there's a ton of champions there's you know you have your world championship your world champions your international champions here your they have continental champions European champions you know they ha it, it's there's a lot going on so as as we do more of these I'll, obviously I'll get these guys better off um, for you guys to give a, give a little bit of a breakdown of them before we get into the fight but let's get into the fight this time so round one the two come out and they really start throwing in the first 15 seconds which was you know like I've said before your your pretty safe bet is that that first round for boxing is going to be your feel out round uh you know so when guys come out and in the first 15 30 seconds of the round you know they start throwing it's like whoa okay that's here we go so they the two come out they start throwing in the first 15 seconds they're both kind of landing on each other nothing that hurts either guy nothing that really stuns either guy but they land uh or they're at least kind of coming in the vicinity of, of landing there you know even if they honestly even if you land on the arms of somebody in, in in boxing or even in mma a lot of times those arms are gonna either jolt it's gonna wear down on the arms or that you can even jolt their arm back into their head so they're kind of hitting themselves in their in the head with their own hand, with their own glove um so first 15 seconds was really good you know kind of back and forth area um then they kind of settled into that feeling each other out thing that that you know you know, I, I like I've said, is it, kind of expected of the first round in boxing. You know, they're trying to find their range, their rhythm. I yes, I just said they came out in the the first fifteen seconds and they started throwing and landing on each other. But it's not really neither one of it, it wasn't really a they weren't really boxing at that point. It was just kind of like we're just going to come out and we're going to start throwing punches at each other. So the, now they're really trying to find their boxing range, their boxing rhythm, all that kind of stuff. Um, Knights is using a fair amount of upper body movement at, at, uh, at this point. It's almost weave like he's almost just continuously weaving, um, which I thought was really interesting, especially for it being in the first round. Uh, it's just not something that I've typically seen a lot of guys come out and try to implement right away. Um, so Carrillo's, uh, and then Carrillo is trying to throw, he's trying to throw more than Knights is, but, uh, He's not landing a whole lot, and I think that a lot of that is probably because of Knight's, uh, uh, excuse me, Neat's uh, upper body movement. Um, like I said, that almost weave-like style that he was implementing, I guess, for, for lack of a better term. 
Um, but then he uh, needs that is lands a decent uppercut with about 45 seconds left in the round. It doesn't drop Carrillo or anything, it, it, uh, but it definitely lands, um, <clears throat> definitely stuns Carrillo a little bit. But after that, not a lot of punches are thrown, really. You know, they, they, each of them kind of, you know, throw a few more times before the end of the round. Nothing really significant, though. So, you know, at the end of the round, I gave it 10-9 for, for, for Neitz. Uh, I, I just thought he landed the harder shots, uh, you know, especially with that uppercut. 45 seconds left in the round. Really stunned Carrillo. Or, or, I don't want to say really stunned, but it stunned Carrillo. So I thought that that was enough to kind of get him the nod. Uh for the round round two Carrillo comes out and he's trying to get his jab going early that was something I, I noted it was like he was coming out and he was just he's just constantly he's just slipping the jab slipping the jab slipping the jab so he's trying to get it going early uh you know both guys are starting to mix up the punches that they're throwing a little bit more so they're it's it's you know it, it's almost like they both kind of found their rhythm that they wanted and now they're going to try to mix it up just a little bit you know even just a, you know, at this point, they're only a round in, you know, they're into the second round. So I, I they, they start mixing it up a little bit, which is, is definitely important. I, I think more so in the boxing aspect, because you, all you can do in boxing is punch. So there, there's comparatively to MMA, there's, there's limited amount. There's a limited amount that you guys, that, that they can do with their striking that, the, that, you know, they can do with their striking, you know, you have jab, cross, hook, uppercuts, shovel hooks. That's really it. You got the overhands. That's that's really it, though. You know, so you got eight techniques there that you can do, roughly. Um, you know, so mixing up, especially this early, I think is really good for a really good strategy for both guys. Uh, Carrillo's moving forward more in this round. You know, he he the the first round. It, he wasn't really moving forward as much. He was he was trying to throw, so he was moving forward some on on nights or, or excuse me needs. Um, but you know, I, I thought the second round he was definitely moving forward a lot more, uh, or at least more. In I don't want to say a lot more, but he was definitely moving forward more in the second round than he was in the first. Uh, and he's also trying to get his one two going. He's trying to get his one two going. He's trying to get his overhand right going. So th those were kind of the three punches that he really tried to go back to the well on a lot of times. And, and this second round was really where he was trying to to get it going. Uh, Neitz lands a good uppercut in this round again. Uh, right about the same time as round one. He was in that 45 second left in the round mark. Um, and he's still having, throughout the round, he was still having better timing. Uh, Neitz, that is, was still having better timing over Carrillo's uh move movement forward pressing movement we'll say and the, and you know Carrillo is trying to get his one two going I really thought uh Neitz had had the better uh success with it and I think he just found his timing a little bit quicker than Carrillo did uh in, in the fight so far you know coming in you know only two rounds here and I, I, I thought Neitz really found his his timing uh pretty quickly uh, so end of the round, I gave it again, 10-9 to Neitz. I, I, again, I thought he had a little bit better success, and I think that was due to his his better timing than, than Carrillo had. So Carrillo's down two rounds to, to none. This is a 10-round fight, mind you. So you're, you're a fifth of the way through the fight now. It, it's got to be, you know, pressure's not on, but Carrillo's got to start trying to answer back a little bit here. Um, so round three, Carrillo starts off, and again, he's throwing his jab out there. He, you know, he throws two to three jabs at least right off the bat. It might have even been a couple more than that. Might have even been, you know, three to five jabs. But it was definitely at least two to three jabs. They were fast. Um, so he throws those coming right out of the corner, right off the bat, and he's throwing feints that that Neitz seems to be biting on a few of them now. Now Neitz is using his his you know feints of his own. And and Korea and seems to be just as successful, if not a little bit more, than Carrillo is using his feints. Uh, but Carrillo is using those feints, which is not something that we saw a lot of in the first two rounds. Carrillo, if he was going to throw, he was going to throw. Uh, and 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 in this round, Carrillo was really starting to to utilize feints more, which I thought was good. Uh, you know. And then, like I said, Neitz is also using his own face. He's still have he's having success with that as well. And I think that was just kind of because he had better success with his his striking in the first two rounds. And now every time that he's going to go to throw, 
or every any time he faints, Carrillo thinks he's going to throw, and he's just you know, Carrillo's just biting as well on Neitz on Neitz's uh, faints. So they're both throwing faints. Both guys are throwing their their shots. Neitz seems to be landing a little bit better than Carrillo, um, although Carrillo is getting his hits in too. You know, and and that's kind of how the round plays out. Is is you know it's. A little bit better, a little bit, I would say, a little bit more of a back and forth. Needs kind of controlling the pace a little bit more. And again, I think that's just his, his timing. And because of that timing that he had in the first two rounds and continued to have in the third round, uh, you know, he was able to utilize those feints. And because he was able to utilize those feints, it was, you know, making it easier for him to land better. So I gave him the round 10 9. So three rounds to none at this point for Needs, uh, as far as I was concerned. Um, at this point, I would say Carrillo's got to start putting his foot down on the gas a little bit more because now you're, now you're three rounds down in a 10 round fight, you know, Carrillo really only has to, or excuse me, Neitz really only has to take three of the last seven rounds there to win the fight which i know is about half of the rounds like i'm not trying to say that that's an easy feat but you know korea has got to win four to needs is three it, it you know it, it's obviously more rounds for korea to try to win so anyway we come into round four here these comes out and he seems to be a little bit more active to start this round at least compared to the previous three rounds you know, he comes out, he, he's a little more active, he's moving around a little bit more, he's throwing a couple more shots out there than he, that he really didn't in the first three rounds. Um, so it was really good to see kind of the, the change of pace there, try to keep um, Carrillo off, try to catch Carrillo off guard, that is, you know, uh, and to that point, Carrillo really, is not, really wasn't throwing that much in, in round four. Um, it was really... Nice landing the good punches to the body and head of Carrillo. You know, Carrillo in the first half of the round, not really throwing a lot. In the back half of the round, he starts to throw a little bit more, but still not a, not as much as Neitz is, uh, was doing, in my opinion. Um, and to that point, Neitz does well using his upper body movement to avoid those punches in the back half of the round that uh, – Korea was throwing and Korea was throwing some heavy shots too. Like he was trying to throw some heavy shots. Um, but again, that upper body movement that Neitz was, was utilizing just wasn't allowing Korea to land those shots. So again, in my opinion, 10, nine for Neitz. He had the success early in the round, kind of carried it throughout the round. Korea threw a little bit more in the back half of the round, like I said, but Neitz still, I think landed better. Even in that back half of the round. Even if we just look at that back half of the round, I still think Neitz landed better than Carrillo. And I still probably would have scored the round for him. Round five, Carrillo starts off throwing some hard jabs. So he comes out, he's throwing hard jabs. I think at this point he realizes, him and his corner probably both realize, like, hey, we're probably down those first four rounds. This guy only has to win two more rounds. And then he can kind of coast throughout the rest of the fight. Now, coasting throughout the rest of a fight is not always the smartest decision because you know just because hey i just because i think i have banked enough rounds to win a fight one the judges may not see it that way judges have rendered some crazy decisions i i i just there, there there's too many to even just kind of give a couple of examples because so many are going to flood to my head and I'll, it'll probably take up the rest of the episode um so it, coasting through the rest of the fight is not always, it, it, I don't think is ever the, the best idea because, you know, the judges might not think that you're up and the other guy do, definitely doesn't care if you're up, okay? The other guy definitely doesn't care if you're up because at that point, if they know they can't win on points, they're just going to go for broke. And if you're just trying to coast and just lollygag around on it for, you know, essentially, the guy has a good chance of catching you then. It, well, I don't want to say a good chance, but he has the chance of catching you just like anybody does. And so, you know, I think Carrillo in his corner at this point, we're like, hey, we, we really got to get going. So he comes out and he starts throwing some hard jabs and he's throwing more than, than Neitz is in this, throughout this first minute. 
Um, now Nitz is blocking a lot of Kare- uh, uh, a lot of Carrillo's overhand rights that he's throwing, because um, that was kind of the the punch that Carrillo is really. Uh, trying to get going here in that first minute, first half of the round uh, is that overhand right to try to at least stun needs to kind of get himself a little bit of confidence to keep moving forward and, and keep uh, pressuring Neats. Um, but like I said, Neats is blocking a lot of those overhand rights from Carrillo. He's also, Neats is also, that is, landing well a lot with, with his... Uh, uh, one two combo so his jab straights and you know I, I think that's just kind of because he, he found his timing and Carrillo was pressing forward um, now Carrillo lands a good left hook with about 15 to 20 seconds left in the round and you know lands a couple more shots after that I gave the round to uh, Carrillo 10-9 I thought he controlled the round, honestly, and I thought he landed the better shots since he was moving forward. Like I said, Neitz was blocking a lot of the overhand rights and landing really well with his one-twos, but Korea was landing with with decent success with a lot of his other punches, whether it was his jab cross. Uh, like I said, he had that good left hook with about 15 to 20 seconds left. He landed a couple of left hooks in the round. You know, I he just I thought he did better in the round and that might have been me saying hey that, that might have been me subconsciously being like hey that was he did better that round than the other four rounds so yeah he, you know he he won the round that may have been my subconscious thinking there either way i gave the round to him 10 9 so he's down four rounds to one at this point coming into round six and four round six Carrillo comes out and he lands a left hook combo. The first one he threw to the head, the second one he threw to the body, and it was a good combo. It 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 was a good pop pop combo. Um, Neitz in this round tries to tries hard to land his right hook, or, or he tries to land his, his right hook pretty hard, it, uh, at least more so in this round than he had in the previous rounds. Like he was. Um, I don't want to say he was 100% loading up on it, but he was definitely loading up on it more than what he was throwing uh, previously. You know, so he's trying to land that right hook. Carrillo's left hook, like I said, he came out and landed it well. Carrillo's also, you know, doing a lot better landing with his jab, which is really going to help him start to find, or at least get his range if he hadn't already which it's difficult to tell because he wasn't having as much success with his shots up until this sixth round here um so his jab is landing better needs starts to land better at the end of the round but i just don't i thought it was too little too late for him honestly i gave this round to carrillo as well 10 9 so i've given i've given carrillo rounds uh five and six needs has had the first four so carrillo's down four two you know, it, the, it's really going to be these these back half this back half of the fight, the last four rounds here that that I thought, um, or the last potential four rounds that I thought could uh, really determine who was going to come come away with it. It looked like Neitz was starting to fade, it looked like Korea was starting to come on strong. So let's get on to round seven, and see what's going on. Uh, so round seven, Neitz comes out and he starts off with the double jab. He starts coming out and he starts throwing his jab more. So I think he, I think him and his corner were like, whoa, wait a minute, this guy's coming on, you know, he, he's starting to to kind of get into a rhythm. He's starting to have some success on us, uh, especially in these last two rounds. Let you know, let's start doing something to to not allow that to continue. Um, so Needs comes out, he starts throwing that jab more. Both guys in the first thirty seconds of the round are throwing, and it was kind of. Uh, it was kind of like that first 15 seconds in the first round where they're land. Uh, some of those shots are getting through and landing. I would say some of the other to most of the other shots are at least landing on the arms um, of the guy that, that's trying to defend the shots. So the first 30 seconds, they're, they're throwing at least more than, than what they had in like a 30 second spurt um, previously. Needs lands a hard right hand. Uh, with about a minute left in the round though and then and that's where he really starts to press on Carrillo in this round 
it you know he like I say he really starts pressing on Carrillo he's moving forward on him he starts landing better on Carrillo because of that round ends with Neats moving forward on him I, I thought it was a especially in that last minute um, easy to score the round 10-9 to Neats so Neats starting to pull away there he's he's now up five rounds to two so Carrillo in these last you know three rounds it, it, you know the win he's got to win the rounds to come away with a draw at least um and if he can drop needs a couple times he could potentially come away with the win so we can move on to round eight both men start off and they're kind of waiting to see if the other will throw so this kind of the first portion of this round the first part of this round at least the first you know 30 seconds of the round was kind of like a round one-esque feel to it they were both kind of trying to feel each other out essentially see what the other was going to do you know coming into these last three rounds here after about that first 20 to 30 seconds though neat starts opening up more um and Carrillo starts looking for that overhand right again again earlier in the fight he didn't have a lot of success with it Neats was was defending it pretty well he goes back to it and i don't know if that was the best call for him um because needs ends up landing a good right uppercut on him and then he lands a good one two five combo so that'll that would that's uh that's your jab cross lead uppercut combo um so it, it, i just don't think Carrillo going back to the overhand right attempt was the best case for him because it kind of opened it up for needs to land these two uh, or at least this punch and then the the, the combo there um Korea is moving forward more but he's not he's just not throwing as much as needs and when he is throwing it's kind of that overhand right that needs has had success with uh defending round ends i gave it 10 9 to needs but he like i said the right uppercut there the combo he was you know he was really the one with more action thought it was easy 10 9 needs round nine both guys start off the tr and again it's kind of a round one-esque feel they're trying to find a way around the other's guard they're trying to figure out a way to land better because at this point both guys are like just want to defend your shots and try to land my own which is always the goal but that, i think it, in round nine it was really apparent for both of them um Carrillo is moving forward more and he's throwing more in the front half of the round um but again a lot of it's just being either defended or evaded by needs and Carrillo's just not having a lot of success needs lands a good overhand right and then a right hand to the body um a, a, you know just after the halfway point of the round and both men are exchanging after this they they exchange punches well I just think Neitz is is better able to pivot off of his spot uh, and, and get away after he lands his shot so that Carrillo can't counter him. And I think that was where Carrillo was starting to have, uh, or at least that's where Carrillo was having trouble in this round. Was Neitz was really doing well at pivoting off that spot and, and evading and you know disengaging so to speak after he landed his shots. And you know he so Neitz was having really good success with that. Carrillo just couldn't catch up to him on that. Again, 10 9 needs. Carrillo's got to finish him in this last round. As I was watching, I was like, Carrillo's got to get a finish. You know, he, he's just got to come out. He's got to be on him. He's got to pressure him. And he's got to land a hard shot to, that'll put needs away. So we get to round 10. And to no surprise, at least to me, Carrillo really starts to open really opens up in the beginning of this round he comes out and he's you know re he really starts to open up and that's kind of how the round goes is Carrillo just just throw and throw and throw and needs is still throwing his shots and he's still throwing some good shots don't get me wrong but it, this round was definitely Carrillo moving forward and throwing a lot more than needs um needs still uses his timing well to land in this round you know both guys are in the last minute of the round land some good body shots uh needs land some good hooks to the head of Carrillo in, in the last minute as well you know so the round was was really 
it was honestly it honestly felt like a, a quicker three minutes than some of the other rounds did in this fight to be honest with you guys um that being said i thought needs still landed better you know even though korea was moving forward and definitely throwing more than needs i thought needs was was had the better accuracy um and again it's probably because of the timing that he found and he kept throughout the fight so again i gave the round 10-9 to needs so i had it eight rounds to uh two for needs so that would have given him a 98 92 scorecard if it were if it were up to me uh for the win so we go to the judge's decision it is a unanimous decision win for donnie needs he is your new wbo international super flyweight champion none of the judges scored it the same way though so they all scored it for needs but the first judge it scored excuse me the first judge scored it 96 to 95 for needs so he gave uh needs would that be uh six rounds and he gave uh Carrillo uh the other four rounds the other the second judge scored it as i did 10 rounds to two for needs he scored it 98 to 92 the third judge scored it 10 rounds to one or excuse me nine rounds to one for needs he scored it 99 91 to needs so i think the the big thing with this was needs controlled most of the fight just because of his timing and his ability to like i said pivot off his spot and evade when he had to um and i thought carrillo got caught kind of watching more than he he should have until the last round really um and i think other than rounds five and six i really couldn't see any other rounds for carrillo um like i said even though i thought the 10th round was kind of carrillo's best round of the fight just because he came out he threw more he was you know uh he threw more he was more aggressive he was moving forward i thought that might have been his best round of the fight but Neats just landed better than he did than than Carrillo did, and uh, so that it's just you know it's just how it goes sometimes. So that was our co-main event. Moving on to our main event, like I said before, it was for the WBO Junior Lightweight Championship of the World. You had the champion Jamal Semperfy Herring versus Carl Frampton. Uh, Frampton and, and Herring both kind of of um, veterans of, uh, of the sport, so to speak. Herring more so because he's a little bit he was a little bit older than Frampton. Frampton because he just had more experience, a little bit more experience in the ring. Um, Frampton had said, "Win or lose, he was going to be walking away after after this uh, fight. It was going to be his retirement fight." So. You know, definitely some motivation for him coming into this one to walk away on top. So let's get into it. Frampton, round one comes out and he's just kind of. It, it was it was interesting how he was laying out his jab there, guys. I I, I want to. It was almost cyclic in motion. So he he uh, when when I a lot of times when got when when you hear people telling you to slip the jab, it, they. They just want you to come out like it's just coming out like that it's just boom boom just out he was kind of coming and it was like like almost like a cyclic motion here like he was just cycling it through it was like okay boom and boom and boom it was it was interesting i i i don't i don't, I don't know that i've seen it before and if i did it's definitely been a while since i've seen somebody throw it like that um so he's throwing his jabs out there like that and he kind of that's kind of how he keeps going for for at least a couple of rounds i want to say as well um herring's pressing frampton though and you know he at one point it seems like he wanted to use that that cyclic motion of his of his jab to set up a left hook so at one point he kind of threw like the cyclic jab and then he came around and threw a left hook with it um so I, I, I guess that was the game plan was to use that cyclic type jab to set up the left hook. It's my best guess on it, guys. Um, Herring's landing well though, and when he lands, he's pivoting off that center line, so Frampton uh, can't counter him. Or if if you know he's going to throw, but he noticed Frampton's coming in, he's pivoting off that center line so that he can land, and and Frampton almost kind of like matador style. Um, or I guess bull style herring would be the matador just kind of comes through and, and, and just doesn't 
uh, make contact. Um, and that's kind of how the first round goes. I scored it 10-9 for Herring. Uh, I thought he landed better throughout the first round. I thought he pressured Frampton better. And I don't think he took as much damage as... I don't think he took as much damage as the amount that he had landed on Frampton. I'm not saying he, he um, I'm not saying that he absolutely hurt Frampton in that round damage wise, but I think he landed better, which would ensue that he would rack up some damage on Frampton. Now round two, Frampton comes out and he he's still like I said he's still using that cyclic jab um, motion. So it, it I, I, I it's just it was it was interesting to see guys. I, I don't really think it helped him uh, land percentage wise, but it was something that he he did and he felt comfortable with, and so he just he kept going with it. Herring though lands a good right hook early, um, and you know that kind of and, and then a little bit later into the round, both guys land, Herring lands another good right hook, and Frampton lands a good right hook as well. So. Both guys had their right hooks going pretty early. Um, Herring, I want uh, mind you, is a southpaw, so that right hook is coming from the lead hand. Um, excuse me. So, you know, both guys land that right hook. Herring from from the front side. Frampton from his his Frampton was an orthodox fighter, so that right hook was coming from the backhand. So it was kind of like they both threw a right hook, and since they're you know opposite stances, they could both land it. Uh, Herring lands better in the last 20 seconds of the round, though, and he lands a good 1-2 combo and then a 3-6 combo. So that was that uh, lead hook, rear uppercut uh, punch that he throws. So both guys, not a lot of action in that second round. Uh, like I said, Herring's good right hook. Both guys landed the good right hook a little bit after that. And then really it was Herring in the last 20 seconds landing that good jab-cross combo and then hook-uppercut combo. I gave the round 10 9 to Herring as again. I just I just thought he landed a little bit better, and you know that last 20 seconds, those two combos really helped kind of for me anyway. Say, yep, he deserves to get the round scored for him. Round three, Frampton again. He's he comes out and he's trying now. He I think he understands he's got to get inside, and he tries to get inside almost immediately. Herring has the reach advantage. Frampton has to get inside and, and not that he hasn't been trying to do it in the first two rounds But it was really apparent when he came out in this round in this third round that that's what he was trying to do The issue was herring was landing really well because Frampton was he was just kind of coming in and he wasn't throwing a lot of punches that To really try to distract herring like he just Frampton was really just trying to kind of almost bull rush so to speak in You know once now, once Frampton gets inside, he does land really, or he does land well on Herring, uh, and especially if he can get inside and get Herring up against the ropes, which he does at one point. Um, the, 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 like I said, the issue was was a lot of times he was coming in and he wasn't throwing any punches to distract Herring or get Herring's attention so that he could more easily move in. Now, Herring is still having some good success with his check hook, um, and and that kind of helps keep. Frampton on the outside a little bit as well because you know Frampton tries to come in Herring throws a check hook and that kind of stops Frampton's movement forward movement for you know at least a split second so Herring can pivot and get out of the way now in the last 15 to 20 seconds Frampton does have better success he's able to kind of move in a little bit more successful on on Herring get a little bit more inside and land some shots but I don't. I didn't think that last fifteen to twenty seconds of better success was enough to score him the round. I gave it again ten nine to Herring. You know, I thought he had the better success for more of the round. Like, like I like I've said. Round four, Herring comes out and he's a little more mobile in the first minute than he really was kind of in the first three rounds. There, like, not saying that he was. He just kind of was stuck in the mud the first three rounds. But he, you can see. I think he's trying to use. Uh, Deliberately use a little bit more movement um, Frampton does get on the inside and he does get herring up on the ropes a little bit better um, in, in in the first portion of this round uh, Lands a good left hook to the right eye of, of herring Frampton does that is lands a good left hook to the right eye area of, of Frampton or excuse me of herring and uh, 
there's a little bit of blood that starts coming from that right eye area. Now, Herring had had a cut on this eye. Uh, I believe it was back in September was his last fight, and it kind of caused the fight to be stopped. Um, I believe that one was an illegal blow, though. So this could, uh, this was something that was like, oh, is this going to um, cause Herring to panic? So, you know, Herring starts to open up a little bit more after that blood starts coming out. I, you know, it was kind of sometimes guys get a little bit of blood flowing and they're like, nope, I'm out of this. And then sometimes guys were like, hey, I'm like, all right, we're in it now. Let, let's do it. And that seemed to be the, the that seemed to be more the attitude that Herring was taking. It was like, hey, we're in it. Let's go. Um, Frampton definitely has better success in this round. You know, uh, Herring ends up chasing down Frampton at the end of the round, though. Uh, but but Frampton definitely has better success this round. I think part of it was Herring kind of had to adjust to how his eye was. His eye is going to swell at least a little bit. That's natural. Um, and like I said, he had the blood coming down from 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 the right eye there. So he's got to readjust to that. So and, and I think Frampton took advantage of it when he could. Uh, which is perfect. I, I, I don't blame him at all for it. Um, and I scored the round for him, 10-9 to Frampton. Um, he did the better damage, evident by opening up the cut on on Herring's eye. And I think he did better be, after that because Herring had to readjust to it. So round five, Herring comes out and he opens... Excuse me, guys, sorry. He opens up with a good one-two combo. So that jab cross. And then Frampton... Starts having success getting on the inside and landing, you know, short chopping shots, especially to the body. Um, and this is this this was it was like oh this was uh, this could be this this could be bad for Herring, you know that this you know Frampton was really aggressive in the first portion of the round. I would say you know really the first half of the round until Frampton kind of he tries to come in and he doesn't throw anything to keep Herring's attention and Herring just kind of stands his ground throws a stiff jab he drops Frampton with a hard jab it was a good hard jab that again if Fram I think if Frampton was throwing some punches on his way in he wouldn't have gotten hit with that because Herring would have had to defend he didn't throw any punches coming in so Herring was able to throw that that jab drops him uh you know Frampton answers the standing eight count not I, I i don't want to say it, it was difficult for him and you know he answered it pretty well he answered it pretty easily i would i would uh i would argue um but that gave herring a good boost in his confidence having the knockdown he started landing better in the back half of the round with his combos he lands a good shot to the body uh that Frampton doesn't like like he actually dropped one of I forget whether it was right or his left arm but he dropped one of his arms to his body after Frampton land or excuse me after Herring landed that that shot to the body and you know so that's and so that surge of confidence and that increasing uh, uh, ability to land really kind of carries Frampton excuse me Herring sorry guys I don't know why I keep messing that up um, really carries Herring through the rest of the round I gave Herring the round 10-8. He dropped Frampton and controlled the remainder of the round after that first portion. Um, because of the drop, he automatically gets, you know, you know, Frampton automatically gets that point knocked off, in my opinion. So 10-8 round for Herring. You know, Fr uh, Frampton's really got to kind of turn it on in, this, in the back half of the fight here if he wants to win it, honestly, in my opinion. So we go to round six. Frampton comes out and he's trying to get in close again, but Herring just continues to have success with his combos. And that's starting to keep Frampton on the outside. Herring has definitely settled into, hey, I got a little swelling. I got some blood coming from my eye. Whatever. It's a fight. Let's do it. That's kind of the mentality that, especially after that jab that dropped Frampton in the fifth round, that was kind of the, the, the uh, mentality that you almost see from Herring. Um, Frampton doesn't seem to be moving in as much because he's getting hit with those combos. And then Herring lands a strong left uppercut that drops Frampton. Frampton gets up. He answers the standing eight count. And off that standing eight count, Herring comes out 
like I don't have any other way to explain it than this, guys. Herring comes out like a bat out of hell, and he is he's throwing volume at Frampton, and a good portion of it's landing. Okay, it's you know it, he. Shoof, he comes out, he he's throwing volume at this guy. You know, so he he's landing hard shots. He uh, you know, he it, it's just the volume and the landing and you know, Herring just he puts it on him. He pressures him. He keeps putting it on him and eventually Frampton's corner throws in the towel, stops the fight. Says we don't want you to take any more. Frampton at that point, it, it took a couple different camera angles for me to see this, but the one camera angle I think clearly showed it. You know, after the corner had had uh, signaled that they wanted to to stop the fight, the fight was done. They're throwing in the towel, so to speak. Um, Frampton actually, you know, turns and looks at his corner, and he almost says, "Why." And I was like, dude, and, and, and me, I, I can understand like, hey, why? Like, I want to go out the way I want to go out. But at the same time, I respect the corner's decision to stop it because their number one job is to, is to keep their fighter healthy, keep their fighter as safe as possible. I understand you're like, Rob, what do you mean safe as possible? It's a fight. They're going to get hurt. I get that. But they, they got to keep them as safe as possible to live the rest of their life. And that's what that's what his corner did. I thought it was a great call from the corner. Herring was putting it on him. I don't have any doubt in my mind that Herring probably would have dropped him again in the round. Um, if not, put him to sleep with one of those shots. So good job on the corner. Um, it's ruled a TKO win at a minute and 40 seconds of round number six. And still, WBO Junior Lightweight Champion of the World, Jamal Semperfy Herring. Yes, Jamal Herring is a United States Marine. I'm going to say this at the end here just so that you guys don't think any funny business is going on. Um, I'm also a retired United States Marine. So once I, I once I learned these this fact about Herring, I cannot lie i was the 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 fan in me was pulling for him because it, it, you know that's what that's what marines do we pull for each other we have each other's back i don't think it i, I don't think my aura my will my my whatever going out into the universe you want to say changed anything about this fight so nor do i nor did i let that be a a factor in how i scored this fight up until the scorecards didn't matter anymore because herring finished it um but i thought it was a good fight from herring he definitely overcame some adversity he had the cut opened up on his eye it was you know not too far away in time from the last time that this had happened to him so i i think that he proved he could battle through that kind of situation as a champion and and come out on the opposite side uh and it's still champion, uh, you know, and I think really outside of round one, I think, you know, Herring kind of controlled the fight. You know, Frampton had that round in there where I said, you know, he he had the, the, the better round, with, uh, which was uh, um, round three, I believe. Um, excuse me, it was round four, round four that that he opened up the cut on on uh, Herring's eye there or by Herring's eye, you know, uh, but, you know, I. So outside of round four and, um, excuse me, I didn't, I not, not outside of round one, outside of round four, I, I said round one earlier, sorry, outside of round four, I thought Herring controlled the entire fight, you know, even in, even in round five, like after he landed that jab, he took over the fight. Um, like I said before, following this fight, Frampton retired, you know, he, that he had said that this was going to be his last fight coming into the fight. So, you know. I definitely think it was a great job by the corner to stop it because now it's like, hey, man, go out, live your life with your family, your friends, be of sound mind to do so and and enjoy your life. And to that, I hope he does. I hope, you know, whatever follows this in his life, I hope he finds tremendous success and health with it. You know, it. I hope, you know, success, happiness, health. I hope he has all of that and and, and his life past his boxing career i really do um also can't wait to see jamal semper fi hair and get back in there and, and and defend the title again uh, so guys that's what i got for you guys today 
let me know what you guys think. If you guys saw the card and you uh, you saw something different than me, drop it in the comments here. Hop over to Facebook or Instagram and uh, you know shoot me a message there or drop me a comment there, and we can discuss it. If you guys you know saw the card and you saw you know want to talk about one of the other fights, hey, drop a comment. Hop over to Facebook, Instagram, drop a comment there, a message, whatever, you know, and I'm happy to discuss them. Like I say, always, guys, if you know, if you guys have noticed a card coming up that you think is going to be really good, you haven't seen me talking about it on Facebook or Instagram or men mentioning it, mentioning it here on the show, let me know. I'll take a look at it and, and maybe I'll break it down for you guys. Um, other than that, hope you guys stay happy, healthy, and safe. And congratulations, you just went one more round with Rob. We'll see you next time. Have a good one, guys.